Good evening. I'm Carl Schleen, Mayor of Lewiston. In the wake of the tragic and horrifying incident that occurred in Lewiston, our hearts are heavy with grief and we extend our deepest sympathies to the victims and their families. This is a time for action, solidarity, and support. Please take note, the shelter in place order issued by the Lewiston Police Department remains in effect. Please stay at home and be safe. The city of Lewiston is grateful for the support and outpouring from state authorities, the community, and of course, our elected officials. Speaking tonight will be U.S. Senator Susan Collins, U.S. Representative Jared Golden, and Steve Littleson, President and CEO of Central Maine Medical Center. And now Senator Collins. Thank you, Mayor. Today is a dark day for the state of Maine. As the mayor said, our hearts are heavy with grief. This heinous attack, which has robbed the lives of at least 18 Mainers and injured so many more, is the worst mass shooting that the state of Maine has ever experienced and could ever imagine. Today, I looked out my window in Washington and I saw that the flags had been lowered. And I realized that it had been done to honor the victims of this horrific attack. I'm grateful for the leadership of Lewiston Police Chief St. Pierre and for the bravery of the hundreds of state, local, and federal law enforcement officers who are leading the search for the killer. I'm also very grateful for all of the hospital employees who came back to work to take care of the victims and for our first responders whose bravery was so evident. Last night, the president called me. He stepped out at the state dinner with the Australian prime minister to offer any help that the federal government could provide the city of Lewiston, Androscoggin County, and the state of Maine. I also, at midnight, talked to Governor Mills, who has been a pillar of strength for our state. Tom Perez, who is a special advisor to the president throughout the night, texted me back and forth, what do you need? And I would tell him based on conversations that I had as he coordinated the federal response. This morning, Secretary of Homeland Security, Mayorkas called and offered help from his department. The Attorney General also called along with Maine's own U.S. Attorney to offer their help. Right before I came into this building, I had a call from the Deputy Director of the FBI who told me that there are 80 FBI agents on site participating in the search for the killer. 80. That doesn't include other people from the Marshal's office, from the ATF, the DEA, and the Department of Homeland Security, and the Coast Guard. This has been a concerted effort at the state, local, and federal level. And everyone is determined to bring the killer to justice. To the families of those who have been injured or killed, I know that no words can fully ease the shock, the pain, and the justifiable anger that you are feeling. My hope is that you will feel the solace and strength in knowing that you are in the hearts of the people of Maine and of people throughout our nation. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce the Congressman Jared Golden, who represents this area of Maine. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mayor Shalini, as well. My name is Congressman Jared Golden from the town of Lewiston representing Maine's 2nd Congressional District. Some of you might not recognize me because Congress has been so crazy lately, I haven't gotten a haircut in months. So. Sometimes things happen that bring your worst nightmares to life. Yesterday, this is what happened in Lewiston. At a time like this, a leader is forced to grapple with things that are far greater than his or herself. Humility is called for as accountability is sought by the victims of a tragedy such as this event. Out of fear of this dangerous world that we live in and my determination to protect my own daughter, and life in our home and in our community. Because of a false confidence that our community was above this and that we could be in full control, 
among many other misjudgments. I have opposed efforts to ban deadly weapons of war like the assault rifle used to carry out this crime. The time has now come for me to take responsibility for this failure, which is why I now call on the United States Congress to ban assault rifles like the one used by the sixth perpetrator of this mass killing in my hometown of Lewiston, Maine. For the good of my community, I will work with any colleague to get this done in the time that I have left in Congress. To the people of Lewiston, my constituents throughout the second district, to the families who lost loved ones, and to those who have been harmed, I ask for forgiveness and support as I seek to put an end to these terrible shootings. In the days to come, I will give everything I have to support this community's recovery. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce uh, Steve Littleson, President and CEO of Central Maine Medical Center. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Steve Littleson, I'm the CEO of Central Maine Healthcare, uh, which includes Central Maine Medical Center here in Lewiston. Uh, on behalf of the 3,000 professionals and team members of Central Maine Healthcare, I too would like to extend our deepest condolences uh, to the families of the victims of the events of last night. I would also like to acknowledge the compassion and the expertise and the teamwork displayed by the healthcare professionals in this community last night when called upon under the most extreme circumstances. Just to give you uh, the numbers as we have them now, I know there's been some confusion and I would like to take the opportunity to just let you know what we dealt with and what we have currently uh, in our hospital. Uh, all but one of the patients uh, that were taken from the scenes last night were brought to Central Maine Medical Center. One was transported directly to St. Mary's Medical Center here in Lewiston. Of those patients, two were treated in discharge. One of those patients was transferred from Central Maine Medical Center to Maine Medical Center in Portland. Three patients, unfortunately, passed away in St. Men uh, Central Maine Medical Center uh, last night. Of those, eight remain now, and we have five patients who are in stable condition, three who are in critical condition in our critical care unit. Just to give you a sense of the scope of what we dealt with within a relatively short period of time, last night, within about 45 minutes to an hour, we had six fully staffed and running operating rooms at Central Maine Medical Center caring for the wounded and the victims. The professionals that were operating simultaneously in those six operating rooms included orthopedic surgeons, general trauma surgeons, urologists, vascular surgeons, as well as anesthesiologists and support personnel. I would like to also express our appreciation for all of the support that we received and continue to receive uh, even through today. Uh, first from the city of Lewiston, Secondly, from law enforcement, we still have a law enforcement presence on the campus at Central Maine Medical Center. The other area hospitals uh, that came to our support, uh, we needed blood transferred uh, to Central Maine Medical Center very quickly, uh, and two of the hospitals, Maine General and St. Mary's, accommodated us. Maine Med uh, in Portland stood by uh, and was uh, ready to accept patients, and as you know, uh, they did uh, accept one of the patients that we transferred uh, to them. And also the various community partners that came to uh, aid and uh, support us last night, including uh, emergency uh, response personnel, personnel from Life Flight of Maine, and others. As one of the counselors said to me before we walked in tonight, you know, often people underestimate our capabilities here to care for people locally. I think last night we proved that by working together, we can do just that under the most trying circumstances. Thank you. We'll take a few questions. Well, first of all, let me say that I think it is more important that we ban very high capacity magazines. I think that would have more input and more um, effectiveness. We had an assault weapon ban, which I supported, uh, that was in effect for 10 years. It applied to, I believe, 17 or 19 styles of weapons. Uh, later, the late uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein proposed an expansion that would have covered 157 weapons. And it was based not on functionality, but on cosmetic features. So there's always more that we can do. I was a co-author of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, uh, which provided funding, for example, for uh, red and yellow flag laws and, um, and for mental health clinics, which I think is important as well. So certainly there's, there's always more that can be done. So, a decade ago, the, the assault legislation that limited access 
to uh, expand your digital stock and acquire our uh, passes? Are you, are you definitely going to be able to compete with other different now? I don't believe you're correct. For example, I was the lead Republican sponsor of a bill that would ban bump stocks, which have the ability to turn a semi-automatic into a fully automatic machine gun. And um, that legislation has not been enacted into law. There was an attempt to do it by, by regulation, but it was struck down by the courts. I still support the uh, bump stock legislation. The other thing that I think we can look at is, and I advocated, um, was to increase the age at which you could purchase um, a high capacity rifle from 18 to 21, the way it is for a handgun. Senator Collins, you mentioned um, there are a lot of questions about the whereabouts of Robert Card. You mentioned a number of agencies searching for him. Can you offer any more details regarding the whereabouts of Card or how close we're getting to finding him? I cannot because I don't want to jeopardize the search for him in any way. I have talked extensively uh, to law enforcement, and as I said just very recently with the FBI deputy director, um, but I certainly don't want to jeopardize the search in any way. I'm sorry. To my, but I don't know. That's a very good question. Maine does have a good yellow flag. No, it, the, I don't know whether there was a report to trigger the yellow flag law. There, it's certainly on the face of the facts that we have. It it's seems. Concerned. Could you could you let me finish, please? Um, it certainly seems that on the basis of the facts that we have, that the yellow flag law should have been triggered if, in fact, um, the suspect was hospitalized for two weeks for mental illness. That should have triggered uh, the yellow flag law, and he should have been separated from his weapons. I'm sure after the fact that's going to be um, looked at very closely. Obviously, that's a state issue, and I do not have knowledge of what happened in that instance. So, the Congress does not show that he's totally protected your client. I wonder if I could just ask you about the weapons again. Why do you think it is that you and so many other lawmakers in America believe it is right for Americans to have the right to own such high velocity weapons? Well, first of all, let me say, um, and I'll repeat it again, uh, that for 10 years we had a ban on certain kinds of assault weapons, and I supported that ban. And when George W. Bush proposed that it be extended for 10 more years, I supported that effort, which did not succeed. Later, um, years later, there was an attempt by former Senator Dianne Feinstein to greatly expand the number of weapons that would be covered by that ban. And it was based not on lethality, but more on how they looked on cosmetic features. And I did not think that that and, and Maine, I would point out, has one of the highest rates of gun ownership in the country and has a long heritage of responsible gun ownership. It has also had a very low rate of violence. What makes this crime so heinous is in a typical year, Maine might have 22 murders. And last night, we almost approached the number for the entire year. Does anyone, here, anyone, does anyone here read from the investigation to tell us? We cannot talk about the investigation yet, but thank you so much, and I appreciate your patience with us and your time. Thank you all. Thank you.